Hey, what is going on guys? Franco Tech here, finally back with another review video. Today I will be taking a look at the LG G Stylo, a $200 device off contract that could possibly be a great alternative for the LG G4. So without wasting any time, let's get straight into the review. So taking a look at the LG G Stylo, first I have to let you know that this is a big phone. It has a 5.7 inch IPS display set to 720p HD at 258 ppi. So yes, this is considered a phablet and if you don't really like large phones, then this might not be the phone for you. But I love phablets though, so this is no issue for me. It's a big phone, however it stays at about the same footprint as the HTC Desire 816 and that's because it has slightly thinner bezels but this is not going to be an edge to edge experience. Anyways, the screen is really nice for this price range. It's bright and the pixels aren't that noticeable. It performs great in outdoor settings and it's possibly one of the nicest displays I've seen on a phone at this price range. Besides the fact that it's large, it's also a really beautiful looking device. It has a very similar look to the LG G4 because of the wider rounded edges, which is why I would consider this an alternative to the LG G4. Taking a tour around the phone though, at the front we have the front facing 5 megapixel camera, our headset, and also our notification light. And going down to the bottom of the front we have our back, home, and recent app buttons as well as an LG logo. Now like I said earlier, the reason I would consider this phone an LG G4 alternative is because of the wider edges, but also because it's built the exact same way, and by that I mean there are no buttons on the side. Everything is on the back, and we've seen this design ever since the LG G2, and coming from someone that's never really had hands on with back place buttons, let me just tell you that this is really fast and easy to get used to because really, your fingers land right on the buttons, and it's a really great design. It took me about 30 minutes of using the phone to get used to the back place buttons, so that's saying something. The buttons on the back are the buttons you would expect to be on current smartphones which is the volume up and down and the power button. And right above those buttons we do have our rear facing 8 megapixel camera with dual LED flash and I'll talk about that more in depth later on in the review. But next to that we also get a laser autofocus with this device, same as with the LG G3 and LG G4. The back of the LG G Stylo is a polycarbonate back so yes it is plastic and it has been given a nice gunmetal paint to it so in my opinion it makes the phone feel and look very nice. Down at the bottom we have the rear facing speaker which plays pretty nice audio. Not much to complain about other than the fact that it's rear facing but you know, whatever. Now a really great reason to have this device is because of the removable back panel. Just like they did with the LG G4, LG also made the back panel removable on this device. So the 3000 milliamp hour battery that's housed in this device is removable so you can swap that if you need to and also you can add an external SD card. This device does allow up to 32 gigs of external memory which is not much but it's much better than the 8 gigs that come stock with the phone. Now that we have the back taken care of, let's go ahead and finish our tour around the phone. So like I said, nothing on the sides. But down at the bottom we get a centered micro USB port for charging and next to that is the first microphone. And up at the top we get another microphone, our 3.5mm headset jack and also a slot for the stylus that is included with the phone. So hence the name Stylo, we get a stylus, uh, which is why I think they named the device that way. But anyways, we do get a pretty nice stylus with this device. It doesn't have any special features or buttons like say the S Pen on the Samsung devices. So this is just going to be a typical stylus. So if you're into styluses, then you might enjoy this. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's sturdy and works well. But if you're not into using styluses, then just keep it stored away in its compartment and you'll probably forget it's there. And with that, I'll conclude the tour of the LG G Stylo and move over to the hardware. Now on the hardware side of things, this is a $200 device. So obviously you shouldn't expect the same quality as you would with say a $500 or even $600 device. But what we do get is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 410 an Adreno 306 GPU and also a small 1GB of RAM. Now I'm really disappointed that all we get is 1GB of RAM and I've noticed that this phone does have some slowdowns when transitioning from app to app or when having multiple apps open. Now this is a pretty disappointing part about the phone. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the phone lags like crazy. What I'm saying is that every now and then I did experience some slowdowns and that's all due to that low 1GB of RAM. It's not terrible though, but I do wish the phone would have at least 1.5GB of RAM, but sadly it doesn't. But in the end, it does run everything pretty smoothly. It's just that sometimes you'll experience some slowdowns, but that's all. And onto gaming, I'm not a real big gamer when it comes to smartphones, but I've been playing pretty graphically intense games on the LG G Stylo, and for the most part, it did seem to keep up with them, but there will be some lag. Still, it should handle most games, but it won't be the greatest. 
nor the worst. On the software side of things, the LG G Stylo is running Android 5.0.2, which is Lollipop, with LG's UI on top. And in my opinion, I really like LG's UI. It's beautiful and simplistic. And although I favor stock Android, I'm not going to change this UI because I really like it. Maybe even love, but that's just my opinion. I mean, there's only a few pre-installed apps and hardly any bloatware, and it runs really smooth as well. As always, LG loves to add its Quick Memo feature, which I've talked about in the past, but I'll go ahead and explain it again. Basically, Quick Memo is a quick way of capturing or writing a note on your screen to remind you of something important. There's different options like changing the stylus color and size, writing a simple text, or even switching over to paper style and making a basic note. I really like Quick Memo. I find it very useful, especially because of the stylus included with the device, and it just works out great. Another nice software feature is the LG keyboard, which is still my favorite keyboard to use because it works really well, and you can customize it a lot too, like changing some of the button layout and even changing the size of it to however you want. They also include a dual window feature, which allows you to run two apps at the same time. This is a feature I use daily, and while having two apps running at the same time, I surprisingly haven't experienced any slowdowns. The UI does include an easy home home screen that is said to be for beginners who want a very simple home screen, and even that still looks really nice. There's also customization with the UI, so you can change the button layout down at the bottom by either adding from three extra options, which are the notification, quick memo, and dual window options, or you can also switch around the buttons to whatever order you're most comfortable with. Also, you can change the color of the folders on your home screen. So yeah, there's really a lot of customization allowed with this UI and I might be missing something because there really is a lot. And finally, we do get the return of the double tap to unlock feature, which can be helpful if you usually have your phone laying down on its back. And we also get LG's knock code. And again, I've explained this as well in previous videos, but pretty much knock code is a faster pattern unlock screen that uses tapping. Uh, it's very simple but not something I would use. And onto the battery life of this phone. Like I said, the LG G Stylo is being powered by a removable 3000 milliamp hour battery, and I have to say, you pretty much get what you'd expect from a battery this big. First off, standby time was much better than I expected. It only drained about 2% within the 10 hours of not being used, and that's actually really good. And next, on daily usage, the phone lasted me all day with no problem at all. I got a very good amount of screen on time, and there's also a power saver mode, so that'll make the battery last even longer as well. Oh, and also, I did notice that the phone seemed to charge pretty fast, at least that's what it felt like to me. So if you're looking for a phone that will last you all day, depending on how you use it, then this might be the phone for you. And finally, the camera. The 8 megapixel shooter on this phone was not very impressive. It took some pretty good pictures outdoors, but when it came to indoor lighting, the quality was more towards the bad side, and I felt like most of them were a bit on the dark side. So obviously that means that the low lighting pictures on this phone are not that good as well. It's a very basic camera and it's really nothing too great. Same goes for the front facing 5 megapixel shooter which was actually pretty decent with taking <clears throat> selfies but then again nothing amazing. The software is very simple with not many features or functions. Really it's a very simple UI and it looks nice but there's really not much you can do with this camera. Now there is a quick way to jump into the camera application and that's by having the phone screen turned off and holding the volume down button. It'll take you directly into the camera app, however it's sometimes opened up slowly. Also I forgot to mention earlier that holding the volume up button while the screen is turned off will launch you directly into a quick memo notepad. So in conclusion, I really like the LG G Stylo mainly for its appearance, its large screen and the battery life. It runs really smooth but sometimes that small 1GB of RAM can make it slow down which was the most disappointing part about this device, that and the low amount of onboard memory but at least that can be fixed. But don't let me end off on a bad note because this is a low budget phone and for what you're getting, $200 for this device is a great deal, especially if you can find it on discount or something, then that's a real win right there. But yeah, it's a really nice phone and if you can overlook the 1GB of RAM, then I don't see why you wouldn't want to pick this one up. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed making it and all of my other videos and go ahead and leave a like and a comment down below. I really appreciate when you guys watch my videos and thanks to all of my subscribers. I'm almost at a thousand, which it's not much, but I do appreciate each and every one of you. It really means a lot to me that you guys are commenting and watching my videos. Uh, if you're new, which chances are you might be. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me so that way you can be the first to watch any of my newest videos. It'll pop up right in your sub box and that way you don't have to search for my channel. It helps me and it helps you so just do it okay. <laughs> uh, finally, I do have a Twitter and an Instagram page if you guys want to follow me there. I'll have links in the description so you can find me that way. I barely started using them so there's not much on there but if you want to chat or anything go ahead and follow me. You don't have to but I would appreciate it. Um, and with that said, thanks again so much for watching. and subscribing and liking and commenting and i'll see you guys in my next review later